My husband Jonathan was a police officer five and a half years on November 7th, 2018. I lost Sean to suicide. My husband, Darad Henderson, was a patrol officer for 20 years when we lost him on March 4th of 2019. John was a very upbeat person, would dance to the beat of his own drum. He was always smiling, dancing some weird dance that he would make up. My husband, Craig, was a police officer for 12 years. He passed away by suicide on September 23rd, 2014. My sister, Kimberly, was a detective for 28 years, and we lost her on June the 17th of 2018. Our father was dependable and caring. He cared so much about not only his family, but also the people in our neighborhood. He definitely felt like the neighborhood watch. One of the funny things Craig used to do, he would introduce himself to somebody. It was always, so glad you got to meet me. Always wanted to joke around, had the best smile in the world. My aunt loved her job as a police officer. She looked forward to helping someone every single day. To the extent he was struggling, I don't think any of us really knew that. He wasn't telling us everything. I believe our officers are afraid to speak up when they're struggling because they are supposed to be the hero. Every day, police officers, men and women, put their lives on the line to protect all of us, to keep us safe. And nearly every day, a police officer takes their own life. Well, joining us today in the audience are Brenda and her twin daughters, Ray and Nicole, Kathy and her daughter, Amanda, Crystal and Michelle, all who lost a loved one and law enforcement officer to suicide. Brenda, I'll ask you first, was this something that was talked about at home? Was the pressure talked about at home? Or was this something that was just all kept inside? It was mostly kept inside. Actually, I'm a psychologist, so he understands about mental health issues and mm -hmm. what I do. But he never wanted to talk to anyone. He always felt like he was doing OK. And you know, if he just had a day to relax, he'd be OK. Was this a shock to you? A big shock, yes. He had been retired for two years. Right. Kathy, tell me about your sister and how this unfolded. Well, she worked for the police department for 28 years. She was a detective. Um, we didn't see any signs. I didn't. It was hard. She was right. my one and only. If there had been resources available, is she the type that would have reached out and availed herself of them? I don't think so. She was strong. Now, Crystal, your husband took his life. Yes. And you said you got some help and support from the department up to and through the funeral? Yes. But then after that, it was radio silence. Once I was handed the flag, cut it. That was it? Yeah. Do you feel abandoned by them? Not so much me, my kids. That's where it really hurts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you have any signs or indications of this at all? Yes and no. I knew he was struggling in some areas. And I begged and pleaded for him to get help. But he just kept telling me I can't. Just can't do it. I'll lose everything that I've ever wanted. So, and then they only lost him. Now, Michelle, your, your husband, Craig, was a, was a training officer on the force for 12 years, right? Yes. Did you see this coming? <sighs> Not this way. This I didn't expect. Um, he had his struggles dealing with alcohol and probably undiagnosed depression or some type of mental illness. He did go through rehab, and even though he went, he still had that fear 